Marhaba. In the old old days, when there were no supermarkets, there were no fast transportations where food and merchandise can be moved from one continent to the other fast, like in hours, uh, people had to come up with ways to keep their food uh, available for the whole year. Because in the market, the food is not available or the crops are not available except in their harvesting time. The most uh, produce or uh, food that was dried to be saved for a whole year are grains. Because basically, world runs on grains, especially wheat and rice. So these are like the most basic ingredients that you can find not only in the Middle Eastern pantry, but any pantry in the world. Today, we'll take you a tour uh, to introduce you to all the basic pantry staples that you can find in most of Middle Eastern uh, kitchens. There are like some differences between some region or some countries, but mostly you'll find these items in every Middle Eastern and Arab kitchen. The forever companions. The meal that no Palestinian can live without. Extra virgin olive oil and za'atar mix. In Palestine, we only use extra virgin olive oil. Not mixed oil or light oil or whatever oil. It's extra virgin olive oil. And lots of our foods as savory dishes are actually made using the olive oil. And even some sweets like the fenugreek uh, tray or the halva tray, the anise tray or the ansonia, and the uh, asawa, kaak al asawa, which uh, like the kaak eid that looks like bracelets or like small donuts that is filled with uh, dates. The za'atar mix is mainly made of the green za'atar herbs uh, that has been dried, crushed, and then some added ingredients are added to it like sesame seeds, some sumac, some karawi, some salt, and sometimes citric acid. The one grain that you find all over the world, almost in every kitchen, is wheat. In the Middle East, we use so many different products of wheat. They all come from the same grain, but they are prepared in a different way cooked in a different way and served in a different way the first item which is the most basic item that you find everywhere is flour traditionally everybody in the middle east like in the arab countries they used to bake their breads and fatayr like pastries savory pastries with whole grain flour but during the european occupation of the area the white flour started to uh, sneak in and people uh, started to get used to it and now they use it even more often than the whole grain one. There are so many uh, different types of flowers and now the baker in me is gonna talk. Uh, we have currently in the market you have things like all-purpose flour, you have uh, bread flour, you have uh, cake flour, you have self-rising flour, you have bleached flour, you have unbleached flour, and so on. Uh, if you want to start with the bleached versus the unbleached, ble both of them are bleached. But the bleached flour is actually bleached using chemicals, so it gets really white. And the unbleached flour is bleached through a natural process, so the uh, color is a little bit darker. If you are like a, a professional baker or you have a business in baking and you actually care about the final color of your baked product like cakes and you want them to be like really white or really pale, you need to use the pleached flour. If you don't care, you just want a good uh, flour to use in your baking goods and you don't care if they turn out to be a little tanned after baking, then you can use the unpleached flour. Uh, the difference between the bread flour versus the all-purpose versus the um, uh, cake flour is the percentage of gluten in it. The bread flour has the higher percent of gluten, the all-purpose is a mix of the two, and the cake flour has the lowest percentage of gluten. If you have all-purpose flour in your kitchen, you can almost use it for everything. 
But if you have a recipe that actually requires um, cake flour, you can make homemade uh, cake flour by using all-purpose flour. So you take for each cup of all-purpose flour, you remove two tablespoons of the cup and you put instead two tablespoons of cornstarch and then sieve them like a couple of times and voila, you have your uh, baking or I'm sorry, your cake flour. The second wheat product that we use in our kitchen is burgol. Burgol basically is made of the very good quality wheat grains. They get boiled a little bit and then dried and cracked. There are different sizes of burgol that we use and there is like a couple of colors, the white burgol and the red or the dark burgol. The white burgol is made of the uh, peeled wheat grains and the dark burgol is made of the whole wheat grains. There are like three different sizes of the burgol that we use. Fine burgol. This is basically used in all types of Quebec. Believe it or not, Syria alone has around 17 different types of Quebec. So for Quebec, we use the fine or number one burgle. The medium burgle or number two burgle, I mainly use it in tabbouleh because I like to actually taste or feel the structure of burgle in tabbouleh. So I use the medium size. The coarse burgle, or my number three, this is prepared or cooked like rice. So there are lots of um, rice dishes that you can actually substitute burgle for, like mjaddara. We have mjaddara that you make in rice, and we have another type of mjaddara that we make using the coarse burgle. Also, you can cook it with tomato sauce or tomato juice, and this is really a very healthy and delicious side dish to like barbecues or even you can eat it alone as a main meal. The third wheat product that we're going to talk about today is semolina. Semolina is mainly made of uh, drum wheat which has a higher percentage of protein than the regular bread wheat. It has around 20 grams of protein in it. That's why it's expandable and stretchy and suitable to make things like pasta and pizza dough. In the Middle East, we use the uh, coarse semolina, or I personally use the coarse semolina in making things like harissa uh, or basbusa, uh, the halba tray or the fenugreek tray, and the uh, yansuniya or the anise tray. The fine one, we use it in ma'mun, in making things like layali lebnan, krayze, the uh, filling of the uh, tamriya, the nabulsi tamriya sweet, and uh, halat al jibel and also uh, the North African uh, people use it to make couscous and the Lebanese people use it to make mugrabiya. The next wheat product that we use especially in Palestine and the Sham countries is frike. Frike is green wheat grains so the wheat is not ripened yet, they collect while it's still green. They mix it with some hay and then they toss it in the oven to toast it a little bit. They bring it out and then they dry it and use it. We make uh, frike soup and we also use it and cook it like rice. We can um, like make it as a frike, like a rice dish but with frike. Uh, in Egypt they use it to stuff the pigeons and the chicken when they make uh, stuffed birds. The fourth wheat product that we use in some of the uh, Middle Eastern and Arab uh, kitchens is jirish. Jirish is coarse ground whole wheat. It's used in certain countries like Iraq. They use it to make uh, some of their uh, kibbe. It's used in the Gulf countries like Kuwait. They cook it uh, with meat till the meat is like really, really, really cooked and then they blend it and I'll put some ghee on the top and then serve it and uh, in Karak, Jordan which is the home of one of the best mensaf that you can eat they traditionally put a layer of jirish under the bread and then they put the bread they put the uh, rice 
and then they put the meat. This is not uh, done like every time they cook mensaf, but actually it is a tradition in Karak to do so. Now to the big controversy. Maftoun versus Kuskusi versus Morabiya. Maftoun is the Palestinian traditional dish. Kuskusi is the uh, North African traditional dish. And Morabiya is the Lebanese and Syrian traditional dish. And actually the traditional Morabiya is much bigger than this, but this is basically the, um, the thing that I can uh, find in the markets around me. But it's actually bigger than this. So all three of them are uh, made using the same technique, but using different ingredients, and they are cooked and served differently. So uh, maftoun is made of fine burgul covered in whole wheat flour. Couscous is mainly new, uh, made with semolina. And morabia is either made with uh, semolina or a uh, coarse burgul covered in semolina. So totally different, not totally because all of them are wheat, but as you can see, they're like different uh, products of wheat and also they're cooked differently. So, uh, maftoun is cooked uh, along with a stew that is based on onions and chickpeas. Uh, Kuskusi is made traditionally on lamb meat and the stew has lots of vegetables in it like um, potatoes and pumpkins and carrots and uh, other stuff. Morabiya is also a chicken based uh, dish, and I think they also add chickpeas and onions to it. The second basic grain that we use in our pantry, or we have in our pantry, is lentil. Lentil is very fulfilling, uh, very uh, delicious, and it's used in lots of traditional dishes all over the Middle East. The red lentil is mainly used in soups. And there is a town called Dimyat in uh, Egypt. They make their kushari with uh, using red lentil. Brown lentil is used in Jaddara, which is one of the most popular uh, vegan dishes in the Sham countries, like uh, Palestine, Syria, uh, Jordan, and Lebanon. It's used in kushari, one of the most popular Egyptian dishes and also in other dishes uh, all over the the other basic grain that you can find all over the world including the Arab and Middle Eastern kitchen is rice traditionally we used to use the Egyptian rice or the uh, medium grain one but like around in like the 30s of the last century when people started to uh, travel into the Gulf area to work, they tried. Uh, they started to get introduced to their cooking and the rice that they use, which is the long grain rice, that is the basmati rice. So basmati is originally, like I think, an Indian. So most of the South Asian countries, like India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, all those countries use the the basmati rice. And because of the old relationships between the Gulf countries and India, um, that basmati rice moved to that area, and then it moved to the rest of the Arab world. Basmati rice is used mainly in dishes like kapsa, biryani, mendi, kuzi, and uh, all of those uh, dishes. And the Egyptian rice is used in kushari, of course, it's kushari, it's an Egyptian the tra traditional dish, so uh, the main ingredient in it is lentil and the Egyptian rice. It's also used in all stuffed vegetables like grape leaves, cabbage, zucchini, lakusa, and also when you stuff birds like uh, pigeons or chicken or turkey. The two rivals, and in the same time, the two friends, chickpeas and fava beans. So chickpeas is now the ingredient or the basic ingredient of the most popular dip 
or appetizer or dish, whatever you want to name it, in the whole world. Hummus, or as we call it, hummus. Hummus basically is the Arabic word for chickpeas. So this is the main ingredient of this popular delicious uh, dip. And also in the Sham countries like in Syria and Palestine, it's the basic ingredient in their falafel. We also make uh, feta from it, and we use it in stews and savory dishes. Fava bean is basically the most popular uh, traditional dish in Egypt. They make full medemmis out of it. And also it's their basic ingredient in their version of the falafel or what they call ta'miya. Also full medemmis, we also eat it in, in Palestine and Syria and, uh, and the rest of the Sham countries. And it's also prepared in many different ways with olive oil, or with ghee, or over eggs, or with vegetables. So it's also delicious, very healthy, and very available to many, many, many people, like affordable. Nuts. We use lots of nuts in our kitchen. Almonds, walnuts, pistachios, peanuts, and pine nuts. We use them to garnish lots of our savory foods, especially the rice uh, dishes. We use them in sweets and desserts like baklava or uh, katayef or to garnish the uh, puddings. And also we use them as healthy snacks. Uh, they have healthy fats and lots of nutrition. Vermicelli, our rice companion. For every stew we make, Rice is basically the side dish to the stew. And most of the time, we make rice with vermicelli. It's like a pasta product, but very thin. We first toast it, and then we add uh, the rice to it, and we cook them together. Sometimes we make a dessert or a sweet of it uh, with sugar, milk, and some cinnamon. One of the healthiest seeds or additives that you can add to your food is qizha or black karawi seed. It's very healthy and uh, we use it in things like patayr, we mix it with cheese and we use it in desserts like uh, the halba tray or the anise tray. Uh, we also um, make a paste out of it, something very very similar to tahini paste and we make uh, a hilba, oh, I'm sorry, a qizha tray. This is specially made in Nablus, Palestine. It's a traditional Nablusi uh, sweet. It can either be covered with sugar syrup or powdered sugar. The other type of seeds that we use in our kitchen is sesame. Sesame is the main ingredient or maybe the only ingredient to make tahini. Tahini is what you use to make hummus along with the chickpeas. Uh, we also add it to some of our desserts like when we make uh, the fenugreek or the halbe tray. And we use it in our za'atar mix. And sometimes I add it to my fatayr, especially when I make the uh, cheese mix. It adds uh, lots of flavor, texture and health benefits because it's a great source of calcium. Last but not least, ghee or purified butter. Traditionally, in Palestine and other Arab countries, we only used olive oil, sesame oil, and purified butter or ghee before the other things have been introduced like the hydrogenated uh, ghee or margarine and all the other types of oils. These are the main two fats that have been used in uh, Palestine, ghee and olive oil. Ghee is extremely healthy, has tons of antioxidants, and it's mainly used in uh, the Arab or the traditional Middle Eastern desserts, sweets like kunafa, baklava, um, harissa, because it adds tons of flavor and tons of nutrition and when you use it in ma'mool it actually helps the ma'mool to stay softer a longer period of time than if you use oil in making it because oil makes it harder <laughs>